All right, physics, here we go. Um, so we just finished the forces quiz. Uh, I'll have a separate video going over that uh, in its entirety. But what we have now is actually a brand new topic, which is why I wanted to finish the forces quiz. I wanted to do the um, that little like tying up loose ends on forces because our next topic is something sort of unrelated, but also sort of related, you'll find that like a lot of the physics stuff is just interconnected. So the next topic, the next thing, concept, that I want to talk about, I want to mention, and why, there it is, there's my electronic thing, All right. What I want to talk about now, something called momentum, which is probably like a term that you've heard, right? This is something that is just like common language at this point. Uh, but we have a specific definition for what momentum is and how we calculate it and how we kind of do stuff with it, right? What we know about it. Um, momentum, right, is uh, related to Newton's laws, right? Specifically, it's kind of related to his first law. Um, Object in motion tends to stay in motion. Object at rest tends to stay at rest. So, like, you when you think about momentum, or you consider like, where have you heard like, oh, they're, they're gaining momentum or they have momentum, right? Usually, it's something that's already moving, and usually, something that's moving pretty fast or something that's pretty big, right? Um, it is also mathematically, like conceptually, or I guess mathematically, um, it's related to mass and velocity. And I should use a different symbol than the uh, plus sign. How about an ampersand? Use the... Let me just say this. Ooh, hello. There we go. Uh, it's... Hello. There we go. Into mass and velocity. Right, specifically, the equation for momentum is that P equals M times V, where P is momentum and it equals mass times velocity. All right, I apologize that, uh, that P doesn't seem to correlate to momentum at all. I think it's the Greek. I think it has to do with the Greek root for that word. But if you know an object's mass and its velocity, then it will have momentum, right? Uh, an object, strictly speaking, actually has to be moving in order to have momentum. Because if the velocity is zero, anything times zero is also zero. So an object with no velocity has no momentum. Uh, we're never going to have an object that doesn't have mass. We don't, we don't, we're, not gonna, we're rarely going to have objects that don't have mass. Uh, they'll come up very infrequently. That's, that's a way later in the year type thing. But um, an example of something that you may see um, why? What the heck is happening? Oh my goodness. Why are we freaking out? Can we not freak out, please? Please? Can we be normal? Alright. The baseball is thrown at... kind of fast. Uh, let's say 30 meters per second towards home plate. Uh, what is the momentum? of the baseball if mass is 0.135 kilograms, right? And I picked a baseball because it's a common object, unfortunately, it has a weird mass. So I know momentum is mass times velocity, which means it's 0.135 kilograms times 30 meters per second, and that's going to equal a number that my calculator is going to tell me. And by calculator, I mean my phone calculator, because it is closer to me than an actual calculator. 35 times 30 is 4.05. So the momentum is 
4.05 kilogram meters per second. I apologize if these are the units. There really isn't anything cleaner. Um, it's not like I can combine them and call them a newton. It's just going to be kilogram meters per second, right? Now, there is another point about momentum that I'd like to make, that I'd like to point out. It's a vector, right? So really, this statement, what is the momentum? If I asterisk this, this should really read, what is the magnitude of the momentum? Because momentum has a direction. The direction is towards home plate. All right. OK. Now, uh, let's take a follow-up. Baseball is hit at 25 meters per second away from home plate. What is its new momentum? Right? Really, what is the magnitude of its new momentum? So we still have that P equals M times V. That's 0.135 kilograms times 25 meters per second. And if I do a little more math, we have 3.375. kilogram meters per second. So here's my new momentum, right? But this time, so this is towards home plate. This is away from home plate. And I bring this up because uncommonly, you might be asked to combine these two pieces, to combine these two questions. And they might ask, what was the change in momentum of the ball. And you might be tempted to, well, for, uh, final minus initial, right? So you might do uh, 3.375 minus 4.05, and that equals negative 0.675 kilogram meters per second. And this is actually not correct. And the reason is because momentum is a vector. And if you remember vectors, when we were talking about projectiles, vectors were the reason that if we threw a ball up, and the acceleration of gravity was pointing down, then the upwards velocity had a positive sign, and the downwards acceleration had a negative sign. So if I have this towards and away, then one of these two must be negative. They're not allowed to have the same sign because they're not going the same direction. So I'm going to say that towards is positive and that away is negative. This is really negative 3.375 minus 4.05, which is really equal to negative 7.425 kilogram meters per second. It's a much bigger change in momentum because it has to go forwards, not be moving that direction, and then suddenly move the other way. There has to be a large change in momentum. All right. The last it's not the last concept in momentum, but the last thing I want to mention here and now. All right, the final. Oh, I'm going to force friction. That's awkward. All right, we'll go, we'll go this way. So, still, you know, talking about momentum, still related to momentum. So, I'll stay in this section. I'll go this way. Momentum. 
is like energy and the mass and charge. It is I can't why why am I unable to write? It is conserved. And if you remember last year in chemistry we talked about conservation of energy, conservation of mass, conservation of charge. Basically meant that at the beginning of a reaction, if you have a certain amount of stuff, then that all has to be conserved at the end. Same applies here. It is conserved during a collision, right? And collision is kind of your keyword to know that you're probably going to be using momentum, right? The best example two train cars and mass one equals uh, I'll say mass one is 1000 so let's say the mass one is 1000 kilograms and mass two is 2000 kilograms collide with each other Car one moves five meters per second towards car two initially at rest and couples as they collide. What is the speed of both cars after the collision? Right, this is fairly common. Right. Now momentum is like charge, energy, and mass conserved in a collision, which is to say that momentum before has to equal momentum after. All right, so let's kind of take a look at what we have and think about this. Before the cars collide, I have car one and car two as separate objects. Car one is moving towards car two, which is initially at rest. Then they couple together when they collide and they move as one object later. The momentum before here has to equal the momentum after. Beforehand, only the first car has momentum. So 1,000 kilograms times 5 meters per second. Afterwards, they have a combined momentum because they couple together. Missed it by that much. So 3,000 kilograms times their velocity. All right, so now if I want to solve for velocity, I have to divide both sides by 3,000. So one third of five is five and two thirds, which is 1.6 meters per second. This kind of makes sense because if the one car was lighter, then it should be going slower when they collide together. It should also be going slower because there's more mass now, right? So they kind of, it, it looks like they lost momentum, but any lost momentum by the first car was actually gained by the second one. And then they move as one thing, all right? Now, momentum questions are usually fairly straightforward. You only have mass, you only have velocity. Sometimes it will be conserved. Sometimes you will be asked about a change. I'm going to give you a bunch of example questions to do. There will also be a video that will go up in the near future talking about a lab, which we will start in class. But I want you to see kind of like how we're going to set things up, how we're going to do things, um, because it's going to be a little different when you have to track stuff. All right, so look for that video. Try to do the questions. I'll see you in class in the near future. Take care, kids.